worship and we give proper value to our relationship with God, our power that God has given us to purposely choose from our will to make ourselves available to worship when we actively get up and get going into the church. Father Alexander Schmidman of Blessed Memory was asked, when do the elements begin to change into the body and blood of Christ? When does the bread and wine start becoming the body and blood of Christ? Because, you know, the Roman Catholics have a little bell that they ring whenever the consecration occurs. And uh, it's always, the, the joke is the Protestants, the Roman Catholics know exactly what happens in the Eucharist. The Protestants know exactly what doesn't happen in the Eucharist. And the Orthodox go, we have no idea what happens in the Eucharist. <laughs> <laughs> Father Alexander Schmemann said, when the faithful wake up on Sunday morning and begin to wash their face, that's when the elements start changing into the body and blood of Christ. <clears throat> when I exert my will to choose <coughs> out of my freedom to purposely expose myself to the divine liturgy, I already begin the work of grace in my heart and the work of grace in my life to become the man or the woman that God has called me to be. It is the very act of choosing, the power to choose, that liberates me to choose rightly throughout the rest of my life. And I will go even further and say <coughs> that your inability to choose to do the right thing is based directly on your willingness to worship God. To the extent that you worship God, you are free to choose the right. To the extent that you do not exercise your will to worship God, you are too weak to choose the right. He said, well, I said, your problem is you've been hanging around people whose God's this big. It's just a little bitty God. Just a little, stick him in your pocket, friend. Exactly. Don't mess with a God like that. Get the big God. <laughs> God, that you just kind of just stand there. Moses. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Your God's too little, folks. If you can't worship him, your God's too small. Get a bigger God. <laughs> and that's the beauty of orthodoxy. Orthodoxy reveals the awe-inspiring reality of a God who is beyond existence and non-existence. Who is not a being himself. He is the ground of being. He is the source of being. He is not a being himself. He's the source of being. Well, this gives me a headache, Father Martyrs. A plus, we're on our way. <laughs> what you cannot stand in awe of, you will never worship. And that is the value of our precious, irreplaceable orthodoxy. Orthodoxy brings us to the edge of our reason, the edge of our createdness, and asks us to lean over and look into the abyss of the uncreated. And the only response to that is adoration. Think about this for a second. What if the main thing were the main thing in your life? How would it change your priorities? How would it change your behavior, your actions, your words, how you invest your time? What if the main thing were the main thing in your life? I look forward to seeing you soon.